LeBron James show with J.J. Reddit has received plenty of criticism. Many basketball fans have accused James of attempting to create narratives to elevate his GOAT status in an attempt to remove Michael Jordan from the conversation. During the first show, he made some comments that were called out by one of his biggest supporters, Kendrick Perkins. They were there, they were guys that was not always counted on. They were small in stature, and they just def defined the odds. Uh, Kendrick, Steph and Allen Iverson, well, the most well, influential well, players ever? Let me say this. Braun is lying, okay? And he needs to stop. You know, no disrespect to Allen Iverson or Steph Curry, but when it comes to Jordan and the impact, the influence that he had on everybody, is no other. Right? When it comes to listening to songs, like, I, I want to be, want to be like Mike. Like, what are we talking about? We're talking about a guy that was in the music video with Michael Jackson. We're talking about a guy that has so much influence that you have grown men, retired former players, grown men that still post when they get shoes from Michael Jordan on the internet. You talk about, like, impact. Michael Jordan is the reason, in my opinion. I'm not saying he's the first to do it. But you talk about guys with their signature shoe, yeah, no. guys like Kyrie, guys like LeBron. Mike made that what it is today. Michael Jordan is one of one when it comes to impact and influence over everybody. And uh, like, think about the impact he had on the late great Kobe Bryant. I'm not knocking Steph, I'm not knocking AI, but Jordan and this everybody else, man. Are like, you, uh, let's stop. And what comes out of the first podcast? A discussion about LeBron and Jordan. No. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he's asking about influential. LeBron Jordan, LeBron was was influenced by Michael Jordan by almost more than anybody until he got to be like be 17 years old. He wears number 23. Right. Also, one of the largest personalities in the media space, Shannon Sharp, recently had some comments about James dismissing the importance of his tenure with the Miami Heat in regards to its impact on his legacy. LeBron stated he would still be seen in the same light as he's seen today without playing for the Miami Heat. Fans may look at the stats and conclude James would indeed be viewed as the GOAT by many. However, many remember him fizzling out against the Dallas Mavericks in the finals, his desperation to win championships, and join a finals MVP who had already won in Dwayne Wade. Here's what Shannon had to say. I disagree. I strenuously disagree with what he said. At the time that he had arrived in Miami, he had two M he had two regular season MVPs and one finals appearance through his first seven seasons. LeBron, do you realize the reason why you got into the GOAT conversation because of what transpired in Miami? You won two more finals MVPs. You more won two more regular season MVPs. You went to four straight finals. LeBron, how can you say that your career was going to be the same without going to Miami? I almost caught a heart attack. <laughs> I cannot believe I am so proud of you right now. I thought you were going to disagree. This touches my heart, Chad Sharp. I know, with LeBron, I mean, we are marching locks. It's supposed to be a debate show. But damn it, ain't no debate here. No. Because you're 1,000% correct. What the hell is wrong with you, LeBron? I still believe he would have been a first-team All-NBA player. I still believe he would have been a multi-time All-Star player. Mm -hmm. But the pushback that I'm going to give, I do not believe he's the LeBron James that we know without that stand in Miami. Because, because without that, because prior to him going there, he had zero championships but two MVPs. Mm -hmm. He goes to Miami. He gets two titles and two more MVPs. So now he's four and two. There's only a handful of people. Now you got to go. There's only three people before LeBron did it. Wilt got four. Jordan has five. Russell has five. And I think Kareem has six. So there are four people. Right. So now LeBron is an exclusive company. So now people got like, hold on, wait a minute. And he had him at the age of 28. Mm -hmm. So now he goes back to Cleveland. He gets another title. Four and three. He goes to L.A. He gets another title. Now he's four and four. So now he's an elite company. He's one of the, one of the two men to win multiple MVPs two locations. Correct. Kareem, three and three. Three in Milwaukee, three in L.A. He's one of two men to right. win multiple MVPs, uh, 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 finals MVPs at different locations. Kawhi, right. San Antonio, uh, Toronto. Uh, Kareem, Milwaukee, L.A. LeBron James. So could you still be the same player? Yes. 
but not the player we know. Because without that, because with you see, here's the thing, Ocho, you can't say, and everybody keeps saying he could go anywhere and win those titles. Yeah, yeah. Kevin At Durant, age, he can. Kev, Kevin Durant went to Golden State, stayed three years, won two titles, Finals MVP both years, got hurt the third year, even though they advanced, they lost. He went to Brooklyn for four years. How many more times? How many more championships he won? Stephen A. Smith has long accused LeBron James of trying to create certain narratives while he's still playing to shape public perception. This is where J.J. Reddick comes into play. He's targeted Smith numerous times over the last few years. He often says Smith didn't play at a high level, and his lack of understanding often leads to lazy takes. Although many were excited to hear J.J. speak to Stephen A. Smith this way, we now know why. These are private conversations that occurred about Smith amongst the players. J.J. and LeBron had this in the works for a long time. To many, it appears J.J. has been the unofficial voice of LeBron when he ripped Stephen A. Smith. I'm, I'm gonna, let me educate you for a second, Stephen A., because this is important, because this gets brought up all the time. I'm going to educate you for a second, because I have a basic understanding of NBA rules. First of all, hand-checking. You weren't allowed to do it in the scoring area. Secondly, illegal defense. How many times have we seen LeBron James isolated on the left wing and, and seen that, that secondary defender flood the box? It's called flooding the, the box and all coming the all the way across. That's illegal defense. In the NBA, in the 80s and 90s, you could not leave your man. So, yes, there's more space now. There's also more help. You think about last night and watching him score, taking on two defenders every single time. And, by the way, the Jordan rules, I get it, man. There was more physicality for sure. A lot of that was just harder fouls. A lot of that was just harder fouls. Well, you know, Go watch the 1993 uh, 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 NBA well, Finals against the Phoenix Suns well, and well, tell well, me that was a physical well, series. Well, 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 first of go all, watch, go watch. I watched, I've watched every game. Hold on, hold on. Everything he does is for a reason. And whether this is to put a little bit of pressure on the Lakers to improve the roster, whether this is to send a, 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 a subtweet to his teammates, whatever it is, there, there's a reason he did this. But I believe there's some, some, some earnesty in these comments. And it, it's, it's not just for a calculated reason. Uh, he's coming off year 20, age 38, a long playoff run where he's had to play a ton of minutes with an injury. And... It's just human nature that you would begin to say, oh, maybe I'm nearing the end. Go ahead, Wendy. I mean, I, I, listen, I listened to every word J.J. just said. I don't understand much of what he just said, but I listened. But go ahead, Wendy. Well, you didn't play, Stephen You first, Stephen and then I'll try. Exactly. You didn't play. I didn't comprehend. I'm sorry. You don't understand our athletic league. mortality. Three I games understand. at wherever Sa South Dakota, uh, Winston-Salem State doesn't count. Listen, I got you. I understand. I got a degree and I'm here on TV, TV with you. I must be doing something right. Oh, you're let's definitely go. doing things right. You damn right. Go ahead. Okay, Wendy. guys, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we had a big three. And everyone said it's a super team. Super team is super team that. But we had to build our team around all minimum guys, which was still okay. But we didn't fill out the complimentary guys enough. Yeah, we had Rio. We had Udonis. You know, but we didn't. We didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. We still made it to the finals and we still probably should have won the finals, but I still give credit to you. Listen, it is what it is. You, you win and you lose and we lost. There's no Dallas was fucking good and they hit it. They hit a stride at the right time. Dirk was unbelievable. Um, but my second year, we was able to grab some complimentary players and role players that really just, I'm talking about super, superstars in their roles. LeBron James, that is some straight bullshit. You got to be kidding me. I know that you didn't just say that with the cameras rolling. That's bullshit. Somebody got to say it, so I'm going to say it. If you remember, in 2011, LeBron James and the Miami Heat, with that roster, were up 2-1 on the Dallas Mavericks before lo losing three straight. Do you know that LeBron James, in game four, scored zero points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in game five, LeBron James scored two points in the fourth quarter?
Do you know that in that game four, LeBron James had eight points? Eight. For a career 27-point-per-game scorer. For a dude that's approaching age 40 and averaging damn near 25. That LeBron James, eight points in an entire game four of an NBA Finals. 17 in game five, but only two points in the fourth quarter. And in game six, he had 21. Significantly and precipitously lower than his average. This wasn't about the roster. You didn't lose to the Miami Heat because of your roster. You lost to the Miami Heat because of you. Because you weren't who you are. The LeBron James that ultimately learned to become a champion. The LeBron James whose resume elevated and changed forevermore. Who showed us that he could be a champion. Who reminded us again by winning back-to-back -back championships. Who ultimately years later overcame a 3-1 deficit and beat the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. You aren't that dude in 2011. While LeBron is amongst the top players to ever lace him up, narrative bending statements like these are a major problem for basketball fans. This would turn all the super team narrative towards someone like a Kevin Durant and absolve him for what he did. Many declare the Paul Pierce, KG Rail, and Boston team as a super team. Those guys were exiting their primes and were on the decline. The separator with LeBron and KD is they were in their prime while playing on super teams. The argument for the Miami team doesn't exist for LeBron. If you have three max contract players, you will only have crumbs left to construct the remainder of the roster. That's the team he chose to go to. It's different than being traded there or being drafted. He chose to go to a team as he thought it gave him the best chance to win an NBA championship. When players have the power to move like they want, with that comes less excuses. LeBron's legacy is already well intact. There is no need to push narratives as his play has cemented him where he's at. One thing personally I do not like is when athletes or any other entertainer attempt to be number one on everybody's list. It's always been strained due to the fact there are different eras. This podcast was marketed as a masterclass in X's and O's, but has quickly gained traction as an attempt by LeBron to control mass media's perception of him. While he has the right to do it, this comes off as inauthentic and as an attempt to supplement for something you know is missing. Michael Jordan's status is still talked about because of what we witnessed. LeBron is trying to tell you what you witnessed. Two different approaches. I just want you all to know the conversations had across X, Facebook, IG, YouTube, TikTok, and other social media platforms has many iconic figures coming down off that high mountain and injecting themselves in these conversations. They didn't comment or like most of your posts when you at them on their social media profiles. Yet, when the narrative around their legacy is in question, they've decided to dive into the YouTube podcasting world. Let me know what you think about LeBron and JJ's podcast overall. How would you rate it? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace. Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet, uh, and, and uh, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down. I'm not going to take it down. Oh.